Guys, New York City is no longer safe. <laughs> there was a complete, like, there was a brawl in front of the studio. <laughs> a complete Crazy situation. There Female was... brawl, by uh -huh. the way. Well, Female and... Well, the whole situation is genuinely completely very sad. Seems pretty evil. You don't know the details. Maybe no. it was a fight over candy. I could hear... No, because I, I was the only one that It went. seemed like there was a candy dealer. Who... I could hear everything through the other door. Okay. And, it, yeah, it's, it's really fucked up. But somebody has been... Arrested. <laughs> Big ups to the NYPD. Thank you, NYPD. Our boys in blue, you did it again. Another sicko off the street. Are they still fighting? Yeah. Well, that's good news. The um, guy looked exactly like Matthew Golden. I the guy say. looked like Matthew Golden. <laughs> it looked like Matthew Golden was getting Matthew. arrested. But a woman got her face completely busted. And then they started attacking yeah. a motorcycle for no reason. Uh -huh. They were yeah. doing this a poor, Street Fighter bonus <laughs> stage to a motorcycle. <laughs> this poor innocent motorcycle. First they knocked it over, and then the guy walked over and, and he started just, stomping just on stomped it. the yeah. fuck out of it. Yeah. So somebody... Uh, had their motorcycle with no engine completely destroyed for and no the motor reason. That's the weirdest part is the motorcycle has no it engine. It doesn't have an engine. Maybe it's somebody already stole the engine. I think we slipped into a backwards was, world. I think we did. Yeah. This is like... It, it motorcycles feels have like, no engines. Like, it feels like Twin Peaks Season 3. Wow. It yeah. genuinely, Seriously Lynchian. It the feels Lynchian as saw. hell. No, it does, it's like that fucking scene where the lady, he walks up to the car and the lady is just screaming. I never been. To I that's never, how that I felt. I never, I never have been seen to that either. Twin Peaks. Oh. That's how it felt. Seen witnessing the fight. I only watched. I watched the first episode probably five the times. The first episode is so goaded. It's yeah. so it's long, so bro. good, dude. It's, it's a movie, basically. One of those I know, and, I, and I'm like, I can't do this four times I, every day. I, wa I watched Twin Peaks a while ago, and me and, and me and the fiance just start restarted it like the other day, mm -hmm. and the pilot blew my mind. I couldn't. I thought yeah. I was. I was gonna be like, well, it'll be nice to go. It'll be nostalgic to watch this again. But I couldn't believe how much I liked the pilot. It's still very good. It's crazy, man. But anyway, that felt to me Am more I like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. <laughs> than, than David Lynch. I don't it know. was much closer to Grand Theft Auto the video game. Am yeah. I the only leftist that loves Twin Peaks? You might be. I like yeah. the restaurant Twin Peaks. When they put the guy into the car, he started like smashing the door from the inside. Yeah. I thought he we were going to see a full escape. He looked like he was halfway through like Zaz makeup from like Batman Arkham yeah. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. He looked like he had like a bunch of markings all over the back of his head and shit. <sighs> Very sad scenario, I'm mm. going to say. Yeah, well, the saddest part is it scared me. didn't think me. it was so sad it's when he was peering through the front door. Going, <laughs> I was trying to make... I was making... I thought that someone was going to die. the fucking recording happened, you go, oh, you were it's actually... No, stop it. I thought oh, somebody was going to die. Hey, Mr. Cop. Yeah. Leave Mr. the guy officer. alone, Mr. Officer. Leave that guy alone, okay? He, he didn't do... All he did was break a woman's face in half. Oh, yeah, that's and then right. Well, that's, a what, that's what made me... What, yeah. that's illegal? I thought that this was like a... a you thought it was a cat fight and you thought it was hot, but then as soon as a guy gets involved... Well, yeah, when a man punches a woman, it's yeah. immediately a dog the fighting saddest a cat? thing. Dog yeah. fighting a cat. That, yeah, exactly. That's not fun. No, that's no, scary. No. That's not fun. A dog chasing a cat around. There's no. cartoons also, about this we shit. All, we all became th we became the three little Karens in here looking out the window like, oh, my God. It was, oh my God. It was of course, awesome. What, happening? what, what are you? Yeah. I, uh, my life is all, so boring. That's literally that's true. all I do 24-7 is look out my window and yeah. go, oh, my God. I I'm hope so this proud is to funny. be an old cat. That's literally, yeah. I, I look out the window. I do exactly what we just did, but for when someone is talking on the phone, I go, uh -huh. yeah, what are you talking ooh, about, guy? What's, that, what's going on? <laughs> hey, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and the, maybe the one or two times a year when someone gets into a traffic fight, oh, yes. my God. Oh, this yeah. is what we look, live for. Come here. Look, look. Well, that's what they're arguing. We we live like the... Our neighborhood is pretty quiet, but when I was living at that uh, that place in Bushwick where, like, the ceiling was constantly, like, falling apart and there was black mold, there was, on Thanksgiving night, um, 
or the night before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve, mm. I saw this uh, this whole family like brawl, and it was like they were only speaking Spanish, so I couldn't understand what was happening. But I saw one dude coming down the street with a cinder block, and I was like, "Oh <laughs> shit!" It was about to get crazy. Oh no! And but like the worst part was the uh, windows in my room because you know how I had like it was like an illegal like uh, like Alex's room should not have been built. Like yeah. there was, it was not it was built on top up of your code. room. Yeah. It was yeah. just on top. Yeah. So my window, I wasn't able to see everything. So I had to go up to Alex's room because he wasn't went home. Alex, I went in your room when you weren't home to watch wow. a fight. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just this family just with cinder blocks and beer bottles being tossed at each other. And it was that street was so fucking crazy. You got to see crazy one street. thing like that a year. Yeah. Like you gotta, the, it's always mm, like last year we saw time. in Portland the guy telling I was us he was going to kill the guy with a machete. Yeah. Yeah. Did we talk about that on the show? I yeah, we did. So. Yeah, a guy. I was, I, yeah, I saw a guy dragging a chain. Yeah, the chain mm-hmm. dragger, the, the, the scary guy with the laser. We saw a guy with a laser gun. We saw a laser gun guy. Who? There was a homeless guy with a laser gun. I don't remember that. I remember. It. Was it in the no. future or it now? Was, must nah, have been. It in was the in the past for us. You're kidding. Yeah. Yeah, it was when we were there. A laser gun oh, in, in the Portland? past. Yeah. Oh, that's even scarier. Yeah, yeah. it was important because he brought that technology from another time, mm-hmm. yeah. another dimension. I do. I I did realize the other day, like when I lived on that street where there was like constantly like a fight or like somebody like throwing like glass around or like somebody. A couple of guys. Or someone collecting cans. Someone collect- no, there was a couple of guys who uh, decided to have some fun one night and slashed the bike tires on my folding bike. That's fucked that, up. Do you remember man. that? The one. The, Did I ever tell you about that? I woke bike up. bike I gave you. That yeah. One? Yeah. Wow. I woke up at five in the morning and I heard That's a bunch wrong. of guys going. No, don't do that. Oh no. Well, that and then been. I heard. Then the next day, both of my tires slashed completely. It was well, a fucking... guys like that would say yes, do that. No, I had a group. No, of, there no, was a group no. of teenage just pieces of crap walking by me the other day, and the, and I was walking Phil, and they said, "Look at that dog, stupid ass dog. Fuck that dog." <laughs> and I was, and I just literally, I mean, it was eight people, yeah. so I just looked down and just ignored it. Yeah. Mm. The other day, my neighbor rang the doorbell. She's like, "I forgot my keys." Ah, that's he, not these similar crazy. To this uh, at all. Get out of my house, you crazy bitch. Yeah, crazy Bye. psyche. You crazy psyche. psyche. I was uh, walking with my girlfriend somewhere, and I cut through that big, uh, that park where we shot the the Underworld's Biggest Mummy thing. Mm. We were taking a shortcut through there, and this group of teenagers pointed at me and said, yo, don't he look like Mario? <laughs> Way. And you worst, got cooked, man. The worst part was I was wearing the, I was wearing the poop hat. <laughs> You're wearing the pee hat. <laughs> wearing the pee. <laughs> and you guys... If that happens to you, your girlfriend is not gonna look at you the same that nope, day. No, no, nope, no. Nope, nope, you nope, have nope. to. You, I honestly, I should have just broke off and went into just like a bodega and just hid there. Until I don't. She I left think a lot of these, a, a lot of these teenagers are very well aware of the fact that they can ruin they any the relationship. Uh-huh. Yeah. If there's three or more of them, of they can ruin every relationship. Yeah. It's like fucking um, uh, nocturnal animals. That that movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's like Zootopia. That. Zootopia. <laughs> Are you talking no. about Zootopia? No, bitch. Is this a documentary? It's saw? a movie that I saw probably ten years ago. That is about Jake Gyllenhaal being such a loser that his wife and daughter get murdered. Oh. <laughs> so, but it's the same kind of scenario. Right. Basically. He's getting roasted. Mm. Yeah, where he's like just going along with stuff. The bartender and, yeah. roasted me last night. You're kidding. What happened? You were there. He called me mustache. Oh, dude, this guy was on one. He was on one. I tried to hand him a drink ticket, and he was. I was like, "Hey, does this cover a June shine?" Okay, and before you say gay, beer upsets my stomach. The bartender, the bartender at the the bell house. house. Oh, that guy likes me. He, I think he likes. He I likes think everybody. He, he like. Yeah. He must like like me and Cameron because he was bullying us. Yeah. yeah. But Did I he give you a him, shot. Well, I said, "Can I have a June shot? Can Can this get a June shine?" And he said, "I don't know. Can it?" Damn. Oh, God damn. And dude. I just said, please tell me if I can buy a juice shine with this. And he realized. He, said, he called me mustache. And I said, what? Yeah. And he started laughing. And I said, did you roast me, man? Did you roast me? Yeah. And he said, no. I said, did you really just roast me? Mustache. Well, the other thing, the thing that we're leaving out is that all three of us were in elf costumes, which is I wasn't in an elf costume. Not at this point. Not at this point. No. Okay. Well, I was in my elf costume. He was normal and to me when oh, I was no, in my wait, elf he costume. Said, he said me, that he well, gave no. me a shot and said, bro, you better than Will Ferrell. 
He said that. Mm-hmm. Ask wow. your ask your wife. She can confirm. She f- defended Will Ferrell. She said you better than she Will Ferrell. She defended Will Ferrell. His wife defended Will Ferrell. Caleb, to the why guy. did you let her do that? Because he's not and better than Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? Your wife you defended to, you don't have Will to get Ferrell. into a debate about it in front of the bartender. The bartender but that's said a crazy it. ass thing to say. Yeah. You're better than Will Ferrell. The bartender said that. And that oh, she, you're smarter she, than Albert she Einstein. Said, she said, I don't think that's true. <laughs> She's right. You're not better than Will Ferrell. <laughs> I don't know. You're good. You're according, a nice guy. You're my friend. According to the bartender, he's you're no. Than Will. You're, you're better. Be, than, you're you think he's Will better Ferrell. than Will Ferrell? Maybe as yeah. an elf. Yeah. Talladega Nights. As an elf, I don't like maybe. Talladega Nights. Maybe oh, as an elf. That's what he was referring. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was saying your whole body of work was no, better. No, than, no, no. I forgot no. you were dressed like an no, elf. No, no, I was dressed like it. He's not saying I'm better than Will Ferrell in in, in all walks of life. Definitely he's saying I'm probably a better elf. elf. Okay, well, you're definitely not better than Will Ferrell as an elf. I don't know. We let's, can't talk too much about Will Ferrell as an elf because that's part of my my presentation okay, today. Okay. So we have to right, move on from right. this topic. topic. We'll, we'll move on. Well, I did. You know what? I would like to come clean and admit to a, I guess, a party foul. One that was an honest mistake. No. You guys, I accidentally stole the spotlight of a karaoke song. It was the it one. You didn't steal a spotlight. You accidentally stole you somebody's stole spot in line. You cut. In I line. don't. Well, it's line it's spot. disputed yeah. because we both picked the same song. But they clearly picked it before you. You. We don't know. It's the jury's still out. Well, then you didn't do anything. But they looked I upset, they, and I want to apologize formally. I didn't realize until well, after. Even if you did, you sniped I didn't their realize song. until after when the song came right. up later in the queue. You have to assume anybody at karaoke if they pick one song. You have to assume that's the only song they know how to sing. Yeah. Wait, so wouldn't the person who you're giving is it? Do they have a person you're handing the request to? Yeah. Or do you tell it to them, or is it like you, you write it down? That you write handing it down. The request to. Okay. I was you say, write it down and then you oh, hand it to them. Oh, there goes the cop car. It's over, Gil. That's sad. That's, 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 that's the saddest over, part. Is that it's over. I hope they're doing a raid right now in that building. Me too, man. That'd be <laughs> hope, so fucking. I hope awesome. they're they're doing the movie The Raid yeah. in that building right now. Re- repelling Across down the, the sides of the building. Yeah. Like, what I, I would like to clearing out every floor, <laughs> hitting yeah. every yeah. corner yeah. like this. Oh, I've never seen God. The Raid. That movie's sick, bro. I think we have you seen The Raid? No, but I can imagine. You gotta watch. You guys gotta watch that movie, man. I think every single time we would go to. Not Gus's apartment, but anywhere with Gus in college, he would try to get us to watch The Raid. It's a good movie. Is it Beast? Is it's it, Beast as is fuck. Is it a Boston movie? No, it's no, like a... But, uh, but it kind of is. Tie, assume, it's Thai like or, or something like that. Well, Gus only likes Boston, Boston yeah. movies. <laughs> it's Gus literally just watches it's like The <laughs> Town, Black Mass, and The Departed. That's all he watches. <laughs> And movies that are like that. He, Man, I, I hate <laughs> hanging out with. I hate hanging out with Gus. He always puts on fucking Mystic River. I need. I need to get. This, I need to bring this book. But he gave me a book when I was in L.A. He, that he has this detective series that he's been reading since he was like ten years old. That he yeah. still reads. And there's like two hundred of these books. Uh-huh. And it's about like a fat old detective. And it's the the picture of the tech of the detective is a picture of the author, and it's called like. Mick Barney or some <laughs> shit, and he just solves mysteries every single time. It's the only book he reads. He, yeah, he, and he ha- he gave me one, and he was like, "Yeah, you should read this book. It's it'll like change your life." Wow, and it's like a worse version of a John Grisham novel, and it takes place in Boston. That's why he likes oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, this one's completely in Asia. Mm, the, raid. the raid, yeah, it's not oh. an American movie. I don't remember what country it is i said thai could be thai thai could be thailand, thailand. Mm-hmm. don't don't know so i'm not gonna make a strong is there an outland might be indonesian no. actually now that i think about it oh are they, they they have the curvy letters thai yeah, has curvy letters, letters. Yeah, thai's I, got you curvy know what i learned letters. why but the guys the from the raid letters. they put them in every action movie now hmm. okay they've just so if you ever see a guy are they the guys who get beat up they usually are bad guys. Oh. Mm. They were in some of the Star Wars movies, I think. But they I were good they were guys in. first? Well, they're in real life, they're actors. Okay. And athletes. Oh, athletes. Yeah, martial artists. I wouldn't say athlete. That, I would say artist. I think a I martial say athlete. Yeah, you know what? That is. It, yeah. Artist is in the name of the thing. I right. was going to say, I would say that they are athletes, but then you bring up the point that they are called artists. The, ad, the, uh, yeah. the acting is the art part. But the 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 martial I would say the martial is the art part. Mm-hmm. No, this is a beautiful dance between the wind and the man. Yeah, I will say an escape wind? artist is not an artist. You don't think so? No. Houdini. That is a stunt. That is a stunt man or what's another stunt artist? 
stunt yeah, athlete. Yeah, but there's, uh, yeah, I think it's a an martial athlete. artist is an athlete, a hundred percent. I guess they have tournaments, bro. Ball, uh, there's uh, no I, art figure skating. tournaments. There are that's art athletic. tournaments. What are you, what are you talking, talking about? about? That's, that's art. Av- that's not that's art. beautiful art. That's they play music. Art. There is an art the tournament after they're done. There's an art tournament, and it's the Game Informer Art of the Month. There's what? that. That's an art tournament. What are you saying? The Game Informer Art of the Month. I don't know what they that have is. The, the the things in the Game Informer. What does that have to do with? What, with what that's an art contest. There's that's just one example. I didn't There's say also, contest. I we said were, tournament. We tournament. About, but that has nothing. To, of course, those people are artists. Yeah, but it's a that's they're not martial athletic. artists. Though. I think I'm. I think, I've, I think I've lost the plot, mate. I think you honestly you bloody daft. I feel, daft. I you feel f- completely you daft. You feel right daft now. for what you've you just done. Did. Bollocks! I've, you've gone, you've gone bo- bloody. You've been bollocks. driven mad by this horrible world yeah. that you saw just a sliver of. I know. Recently, this violence is driving you out of your mind. You would not last one up second. The, it's all up the junction. I've I've completely you've lost gone the around plot. the bend. You've, you're round the bend. Oh. You're over the hill, mate. <laughs> you hit the wall, mate. You hit the wall. I've hit a wall. I've the, hit the, the wall. wall. You've hit the wall. The wall. I've hit the wall. Yeah. I'm completely wall. washed. I'm mid now. You're not mid. Which man. celebrity women? I used do you to be a baddie, but now I'm mid. Uh, Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon what? hit the wall. Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren hit the wall. <laughs> um, um, B. Arthur. Uma B. Thurman. <laughs> <laughs> B. Arthur hit the wall. Yeah. Betty White. Your way. Betty White Betty hit the wall White. and then passed away because you hit it so hard. Yeah. Oh, the cops are still here. What the hell? Now they're going to come get it. For- We're going to have to give a fucking We're gonna statement. Have to go statement on God recording. damn it, dude. <laughs> we'll just we'll just hand them the first 30 minutes of the episode. I, I will give a statement. I'm willing to give a statement if it is on recording. Yeah. Yeah. Because for my own protection. We yeah. Have that's have what we two, say. Two but, cops yeah. standing right here. <laughs> oh, my God. I think that's a good idea. No, I will not yeah. talk to them. Pound that out. Yeah. Yep. That's a good ass idea. I'm leftist yeah. as hell today. I'm talking about Twin Peaks, not talking to cops. What's next for you, man? What's next for me? Right wing. Mm-hmm. Time to become I'm gonna, right wing. I'm going to completely turn. I'm going to become post left. I'm going to go talk to those cops. <laughs> go talk to them, man. Uh, I'm going to go see, out there. I'm going to ask for an application. The thing is, cops are so different in New York versus North Carolina. Yeah. In North Carolina, every cop is a super soldier. They're bred from they're birth to be a police officer. Same with my hometown. Well, my hometown, yeah. we have the SWAT team. In New because York, of the they're airport. just like normal, like five, four they women. They go to the store here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They go to the store. They walk then around. The, down here. in North Carolina, they go, they have, they do, uh, they walk as an army. It mm-hmm. is a literal army they in North show, Carolina. They, people always say cars. the NYPD is militarized. This is not, none of these people could be in the military. No. No, they These could are, be. They could. I mean, they could be drone operators for sure. They could mm. be drones. Like, yeah. Like they could maybe like, be part of the BTS army. <laughs> Perhaps the BTS army. Maybe the BTS army. The only yeah. cops that he's the US seen. The U.S. Army. <laughs> the only no, cops no, that no, Cameron no, has no. seen are Korean guys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> white people love the white being people the are BTS in the BTS army. army. I thought that That's they were big... called the BTS army because you thought that you thought they were called army because they I were thought Korean. The group, no, I thought the group was called BTS army. They're called BTS. What? I thought BTS was short for BTS Army, and then BTS was short for something else. BTS <laughs> is short for something, but I don't remember. <laughs> behind behind, the, behind the, scenes. the scenes. Oh, yeah. Boys the Singers. Boys the Singers. Mm, mm-hmm. Boys the Singers. But BTS has to go into the Army. They broke up because they got pressed into this military is cra- service. This keeps happening to... Wow. Guys, this that's keeps happening... Every, uh, Korean uh, pop stars, they have to go fight in the Army. That's they always, insane. That's a you bunch have to of do one year bring well, up mandatory they have to, service. They have to Whenever a country has mandatory crazy. Army, that's fucked up. They have to do mm. it a, a lot. This has been taking down a lot of esports athletes. Speaking of athletes... Yeah. Yeah. Which those are the only real athletes nowadays. PRX Jing just had to take a, a year off because he got put into the army. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's and then disgusting. he came back and he was even better at using his gun in the games. Yeah, because now he knows how to reload it. Properly. And now he has the, the the thrill of the kill means nothing to him uh-huh. anymore. He's doing this is my rifle. This is my gun. Exactly. It's completely been brainwashed. And so this makes you better. I don't know how it would make you better at music and dancing and rap, which mm-hmm. BTS uh, involves himself in rap. But I couldn't believe when they rapped. They also involved themselves in McDonald's. They you involved themselves in a new meal. It's We're being distracted car, by it's a oh, yeah, by the a car, car is beeping at the cops. Yeah, yeah. So this that's is another. Fun. That's a classic another New York thing. moment. 
yeah. developing uh, conflict. Yeah, that you. I feel like you'd only get that in New York, where like they like if you honked at a cop that for blocking the road at all, they would draw their weapons immediately and Swiss cheese your car. In North Carolina, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be you can't do that kind of thing. Yeah. No, here you have to be respectful and you have to cry, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. else you dead. Yeah. Here, you PC. I mean, there's so many videos of people fist fighting police in New York City. Oh yeah, I and saw the a cops video. are just do. The cops yeah, they just, go for yeah, it. The yeah, the cops will hand somebody literally like that video where the guy is fighting the dude in the park and he like slips out the gun and hands it to his friend. Yeah, it's exactly like that yeah. with all the cops. They yeah. take off all their shit. Yeah, and they're, they're like, like let's I'm go. off duty now. Let's box. Let's do, it. Let's yeah. do this shit. Yeah. Well, that's like the thing. That. That's that's a uh, that's, new, that's a respect thing. Yeah, that's fucking. Do you honor. imagine somebody coming like moving to New York to become a New York police officer? That's got to be the most psychotic person in the world. Can they do that? Can you do that? Do you have to be a resident of the place that you lived? To no, because all the all the traffic cops in my neighborhood are all from India. Hmm. Like every. Do single they one ever of them. do the thing that they do in movies where they're like, "Listen, buddy, you you're you're too crazy. We're we're forcing you to move to a village." You can't be like hot fuzz, like hot fuzz, exactly. Like yeah, hot they fuzz. do that. Is that yeah. real? Do they, they do that? If they somebody say, gets in a police involved shooting and gets whatever, they, they say move you have them to yeah. the sticks. Yeah. yeah, but do you have to? That's m- funny. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's it's it's your cops in the sticks are eviler. I know. Well, that's because they're why. all from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, <laughs> they're all because they all <laughs> shot somebody. Yeah, they all got sent away. Yeah, they all got sent to boarding school by their bosses. Imagine the reverse though, like a cop that's like too shitty, so they send him to New York. Yeah, they should do that. We with need like to toughen time. you up. Well, it's cop here. I heard there's a cop here who, who shot a couple people. They sent him to Christmas City in the North Pole. Really? Huh. Yeah. Doing what? Cop? Be, being a police officer. Being a police officer? Yeah. The, Imagine the police NPPD? there. Yeah. Wow. They don't have guns. They have a candy cane in their holster. Mm-hmm. They, they have shoot, slingshots. They mm-hmm. have slingshots that shoot yeah. bullets. Yeah. yeah. That shoots bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> a slingshot that shoots bubbles. Uh, That's a good invention. That's actually an amazing invention, man. Yeah. I like you might that. be back. You might have gained the plot back. Mm-hmm. They might have jelly marbles kind of bubbles, kind of bubble like that. Jelly marbles jelly kind of marble bubbles. Look at this. An orby. Yeah, you lost it again, man. Orby. Yep, you're back to being completely I gone. I liked it when it was just a bubble. Yep. A uh, a sleigh that with an alarm <laughs> system or a siren oh, system, that's rather. that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Don't, I don't mind that at all. A sleigh. I mean, wait. What other vehicles are there in the North Pole? Is Santa Sarah the Mobile. only sleigh? Is he the only one with a fucking car? Yeah. Cross-country skis, Snowmobile. Yeah, you have to like walk everywhere or ski everywhere. They yeah. definitely have got oh, snowmobiles, snowshoes. man. Snowshoes, snowmobiles. Did you I mean, guys that's ever, walking. Did remember you guys ever snowshoes? see snowshoes? S N E A U X. No. Oh, that was like Stevo's shoe company. You ever see snowshoes when you were a kid on movies and TV and say, "I want to walk on those, man." It's yeah, fun. Are they have, really you been, have you ever been snowshoeing? So it spreads out your weight, so you don't sink into the snow as oh, much. Oh, that makes. But sense. they're just it's tennis really rackets, wide. right? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, a cartoon one is, yeah. I'm I sure the tape old tennis ones tennis rackets are. to my feet when I was a kid. It probably mm-hmm. does about the same thing. My, well, we didn't my have mom, any snow. I used to go snowshoeing with my mom. They're like metal and like, I mean, they're kind of like, like, yeah, they're like metal and they're your feet lock in like skis. Have there been adva- Yeah, I was going to ask, has there been advancements in snowshoe technology? Yeah. Probably Do you think they have a style. snowshoe that looks like a Jordan 4? No, well, so you could you wear your shoes. Oh, okay. Still, so you could just wear your. But that Jordans. would be fire, dude. Yeah, you just wear your shoes that and you strap so into sick. the snowshoes. But it's fun. It's a it's a fun thing to Imagine do. Imagine the Balenciaga snowshoe. Mm. Mm. Pulling up at your Inuit Free village idea. with the Balenciaga snowshoe. Dude. Free idea, yeah. Balenciaga. People losing listening. their fucking mind. The fun part is when you get the poles, like the cr- cross country ski mm-hmm. type poles. You don't really this, need them at all. I've been watching this woman on the phone who. Is from Ooh, ambulance. Ambulance. Oh, my God. oh, dude, it just keeps coming. Well, what, what, the, the fucking mailman's gonna show up next. Though. What the hell? <laughs> Come on. The mailman did show up in the middle of it. The mailman, the pizza guy, everybody just <laughs> when I up. when the I was teacher, in the, the, the other teacher, the other yeah. door when I was in the other doorway, the mailman poked his head over and then threw a package in and then started walking. That sucks if you're a mailman and something happens like that and it happens yeah. like at the place you have to deliver. It's Ugh. illegal for Jesus. you to not deliver right. that mail. You have to yeah. deliver it. You have a literal honors bound system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a code that you must The uphold. mailman's yeah. code is one that is punishable by death. I've been trying to get uh, if you break it. I've been trying to get car insurance and every single time I go for a quote, it always asks, is anybody in your family in the military, the uh, a, a police officer or a postal officer. Mm. So you, apparently you get all the same benefits. Yeah, you get crazy, crazy benefits. From just being a fucking mailman? Yeah, yeah my uncle's a swag. mailman. 
or was a mailman. Then this he is had an a crazy amazing, hip surgery. Anybody should do this job. So it takes a long time to get to where it's really good. Mm. Like that's very heavy seniority based. Yeah, mm. that's what my like, my uncle is at. To, yeah, you have to like work for a long time before so you it get is all like the, the samurai. They kind of they kind of I think it's one of the things where they kind of initiate you. They kind of fuck with you a little mm-hmm. bit. You get hazed. Well, yeah. you get hazed in getting the worst hours. Well, you like definitely getting, get who, the new on, kid. The, the new guy definitely and, gets the Santa letters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like, "Go ahead, bring him to the North Pole, <laughs> yeah, 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 dickhead." Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to give my uncle my letters to. They go to a, you know, they have a training academy. Them. My buddy's a mailman. Shout out to to Emmett. Um, he was telling me that he he they he has to go to, to like an it's like a full academy. Like yeah. you go to like for like two weeks or whatever, and wow. you go take different classes about different types of mailman. Things. Do you have wow. to? Do you do? Isn't that awesome? Do you spin the bag like the gun? You have to learn how to spin the bag. There's reading bad handwriting on letters no. on the addresses. Oh my god. There's not. That's I not knew, no, I thought that was there true. There is a whole section there. of. There's like a, a. I thought you actually. <laughs> I thought you were telling the truth. Well, there. the the academy is real, but that's yeah. not a real class. There's a big that USPS uh, um like center where all the mail the mail where they can't read the handwriting yeah. goes, and they all they use some computer some, yeah, to try yeah, to input yeah. it, and then some of those letters have just been there. They can't throw them away. Yeah. So some of those letters have just been sitting there for like forty years. It's crazy. Because they just have no idea where it's supposed to go. Have you ever thrown mail away? That wasn't yours. Yeah, My course. wife threw away a giant box of mail that was sitting in our apartment for a while this week, and I said, that's illegal. You're going to go to jail. You just admitted to your wife's crimes. Yeah, well, I, double jeopardy can't be held responsible. Oh, uh, okay. I always <laughs> I always, throw it, cry, I always return them. Yeah. You return every last piece? Oh, but so d- if it's a former tenant and it doesn't say or current resident, <coughs> I yeah. cross out the barcode and say not at this address, and I send to put it uh, back. That's in what you're supposed out, to do. Is that what you're supposed to do? Yeah, but it doesn't work. I just put hey, it in yeah, the so pile. What's you're supposed you're supposed to do that, and then supposedly the mail carrying service is supposed to take like the and post office is supposed do. to take it and like well they take it, but they're supposed to take it and be like, oh, we won't deliver this to mm. uh, to this person anymore here because yeah. they're For clearly not some here. Reason, but they still send them, but they I, do take I, it away. I get like every single apartment that I've lived in. No, my first apartment. Every apartment, but after my first apartment, I've lived in three places. Uh, they have never ever once given me a mail key. Really? And so in you my have last, no access. my last apartment before I moved out, I started. I talked to my mail lady and I said, "Is there any way that you can open this up for me? I have not been given a mail key. Um, like, is there? Do I go to your office to get a mail key or what? Uh, that looks awesome. Wait, talk into it. Cam put a what? Santa hat on his microphone. I think it's dampening it too much. I don't think it's dampening it at all. You do. I don't sound think it's cool dampening though. it enough. You sound like Santa. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. Oh. Wait, you really do. Oh, 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 oh. I was oh. a little yeah. Dracula now. Yeah. But yeah, she said, oh, shit, that makes so much sense. And then opened it up and there was just crammed mail, like <laughs> like the slot. <laughs> like just had so much shit it in there. Like, she a, was like, like a real thinly cut turkey sandwich. Yeah. Where they folded yeah. over a million times. That's what it yeah. looked like. And she was like, yeah, I just thought nobody lived here. Wow. I thought you were nobody, man. Yeah. I thought you were a complete ghost. I thought you just didn't matter at all. Yeah. Well, but Cameron. I had a stack of mail that tall. You putting that hat on your microphone. Reminded me of Christmas. Got me well into the Christmas spirit. Yeah. Guys, mm-hmm. it's week two of the, f- or is it? Four weeks of Christmas. Week I guess, two? I think so. It's week two of the four weeks of Christmas. I on the yeah. second week of Christmas. Oh, I wish we had a s- uh, sleigh bells on there. Well, like watch go. this. I think you're going to be surprised in one second. That's the bell shaking. It's if you hit them really blowing. hard. That's it's a, a different. They changed the. That's bells. a Jaws harp. It's not a Jaws harp. It's a Jew's harp. Why do you say Jaws harp? Because it goes in your jaws. Oh, you're afraid to say Jew's harp. It goes in between the jaws. There we that's go. Kind of jingle bell. That's, that's closer to a jingle. That's bell, Christmassy. Yeah. What is that sound? Chimes. chimes. Hmm. No. It's chimes. Maybe it's <laughs> chimes. It's fully chimes. It has no. been declared chimes the by the sound go. association. Open up the powerpoints. And go. And we're off on another amazing off to journey, too, guys. Races. Mystic Investigation. We're back on Mystic Investigations, y'all. I think we're Untitled back. Presentation is mine. Yeah. And mine is Kaki Webibaba. Kaki Webibaba. All right. Who's going, who wants to go first? Uh, I can go first. Okay. Let, let Mr. Patrick go first. All right. So we are back talking about Mystic Investigations, you guys. You're back talking me. 
but no, no I'm you talking, dare back talk. talking about mystic hey, and you're doing it right now you bitch I'm not back talking I'm you're not sassing. a bitch you're I'm not sassing sassy. me you I'm bitch. not sassy you start can you give it like an applause because it's mystic investigations this is one that the fans love well, I, I think need we, an applause we, I love mystic investigations we I got lost are, looking in through we all were this stuff investigating today. a mystical event over there that of a fight that I feel like we did not give Mystic Investigations a big enough applause when it when we mentioned All right, it. Well, if you're when we dropped such a, it. again back talking me, but Mystic Investigations, y'all. All right, you get that. You get a, All right, you get a couple the, of claps from me. I was concerned that we weren't gonna talk about what Christmas is really about. Which obviously, as Presents. you know, mm, no, that's exactly what I was gonna talk no, against. That's exactly I, what I, I thought was it was commercialism. Against. I yeah, think that no. maybe you're forgetting the true meaning of no, Christmas. It's a, no, it's oh, about, what's the true meaning, Pat? Well, the true meaning... It's about corporations no, having it is about, green and red. It is about... And their logos. Res, it's about respecting the birthday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Never Julio, click next on the slide. Did Santa Claus ever meet Jesus? Oh my! Okay, here's my here's my theory. Posted December seventh, twenty twenty three. Based on this picture, is yes. The Christmas spirit. <laughs> Wait, the Christmas spirit wrote this. My uh -huh. theory is no, because Santa came. Santa had no reason to be Santa until Jesus had passed away. Well, let's let's let's, let's hear it yeah, out. Yeah, you're gonna you're you're gonna love this. What you're about to hear. You're from sure the, from the Christmas spirit. More back talk. And as an Amazon <laughs> associate, we earn from qualifying purchases. Yep. Yes, Santa Claus has indeed met Jesus Christ, the first son of the Omniverse God, on that. several occasions. This includes <laughs> the one time Santa was in heaven upon his death at the hands of the Anti-Claus on December 6, 343 AD. While in heaven, he was able to witness Christ in his complete magnificent metaphysical form. Although that wasn't the first time he met the most famous demigod, oh, click the next slide, demigod and vice lord of the Omniverse. Despite being born almost 235 years after the death of Christ, Santa was able to meet Jesus via time travel. Wow. As a demi-angel, Santa, or Nicholas at the time, accidentally stumbled upon his developing chronokinetic powers at age Whoa. 16. Wow. He spontaneously traveled 15 minutes back in time to meet himself. Naturally, 15 minutes before that happened, he was shocked to meet his future self. After that, Santa began practicing time travel, but he found the further back he traveled, the more energy was drained from him. He also found himself greatly weakened and need and in need of ever longer, ever longer recovery times. At age 19, he finally traveled <laughs> back to the year Wait, 1 AD to I meet need baby to see Jesus. Santa at age 19. What I do you think he, he was? I dude. wish they had a photo. Rippling muscles, yeah. bulging oh through a red pinstripe suit. Ooh, because he Damn. had the suit. Because he had the suit. You know suit. he had the suit. No beard. Yeah, that's mm. what Adventures I'm saying, Adventures of man. Young Santa Claus. Ooh, that is an Let's amazing... Let's make the movie, guys. we got to make that movie. Adventures of Young it's Santa, like idea. Young Indiana Jones. Uh -huh. yeah. He could fight a piece of or glass. Young Sheldon, Young... Whatever. Young anything. Be any young movie. Yeah. People love when old stuff is young. And mm -hmm. Adventures of Young Little Wayne. Mm -hmm. We could make that too. Young Scooby-Doo. They made that. At age 19, he finally traveled back to the year 180 to meet baby Jesus and officially became part of the first Christmas. The three wise men magi sensed his holy nature and he was allowed to approach the Christ child. He technically gave Jesus the first Christmas gift wow. when he presented a rattle that he made. <laughs> Although... It was actually gift. the fourth <laughs> gift after the three wise men's presents. Uh -oh. When Santa was 24, he visited Jesus in his 30th year of life. Jesus had complete knowledge of St. Nicholas's importance in the future. They discussed the state of reality and the destiny of humankind. <laughs> I, I, do, I do feel like that's a little bit of a flop gift for the Son of God. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. A rattle? A ra if, if after, it, after gold? Yeah. Gold? Frankincense? Myrrh? Myrrh? I myrrh. love myrrh. Oh. myrrh. Frankincense, I do... This, uh, we're, while we're speaking about movie ideas, yeah. uh, this uh, kind of a my dinner with Andre, Santa, and Jesus sitting wow. down to chop it up about That's the state exactly of reality and the destiny thinking. of humankind. Uh -huh. Isn't that an incredible that idea? My dinner incredible with Santa idea. and my Jesus. Dinner with yeah. <laughs> Santa's dinner with Jesus. <laughs> Santa's dinner with Jesus coming 2025. Because the thing is, Jesus yeah. has, he's not ascended yet, but he has some knowledge that Santa will be important. An important uh -huh. figure. Santa will be course. one of the most yeah, important he has, figures. Uh, which of he, Christmas. I think it's hard to argue that Santa's not maybe the most important person. Imagine, ever imagine meeting somebody like somebody who is like, I have time traveled to meet you. Mm -hmm. Please, please let me be the God of your birthday. 
Let yeah. me be the god I of your birthday. I want to be in control of your birthday I after wanna, you're yeah. dead. I, once you die, once you I die, keep I it have going. to I'm from the future, and I am amazing. in charge of your birthday. I'm from your future. You're going to die Here's in three a rattle. years. Here's, Here's a rattle. <laughs> Do you remember this rattle I gave you? I think that um, I just would be, I'd be a little skeptical of him being the son of God if, as a baby, he was playing with a rattle. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's you a know? bad gift. It's yeah. a bad, bad the gift. The frankincense, he's going to smell that. The that's, myrrh, and that stuff he's going to use that. That stuff has spiritual significance. It's mm-hmm. in the Bible. Yeah. Well, I guess rattles kind of have a spiritual significance. How so, bitch? Maybe the sound of, maybe it's a sound. You could, if you're the death dead, rattle. if you're dead, you could, yeah, your death rattle. Oh, my God. Santa delivered his death rattle. Back with the sarcasm. <gasps> Holy crap. The sarcasm. He's being sarcastic. No, I'm not tell. being sarcastic. I can tell based on the way you're talking. No, no, no. Okay, well, speaking of death rattles, Santa Claus witnesses the death of Jesus Christ, and I need you to see this photo of Santa kneeling <gasps> at Christ's cross. Oh. Holy shit. The Holy unmistakable this is silhouette one of, the most, of Santa. One of the most artistic photos I've ever seen in my life. It is so beautiful, this photo of Santa and Christ. Well, it's Christ isn't there. It's just the cross. Well, it's the cross. Of this is Christ. the cross. Mm-hmm. Caleb. Well, is it crossed your cross to wear or cross to cross bear? to bear? But he wears it. He, oh, bared he bears it. it. It's on his body. He wears it. Well, oh, he bears it, man. Finally, at age 32, Santa went back to witness the crucifixion of the Lord's son. When speaking of this, he begins to weep and says it's the most horrific thing he ever saw. Santa openly admits he went back a bit earlier in an effort to save Jesus from the Romans. However, Jesus himself implored Santa to let history take its place at its predestined course. In reality, Christ knew the Romans weren't the real threat, but a mysterious force from beyond the omniverse who had a vendetta for with his father. They are the ones who weakened Jesus so that the Romans could murder him. Had Santa had tried to intervene, he might have been wiped from the very face of the earth before Christmas ever truly this got started. This can't be the worst thing Santa ever seen. No. How many times has Santa gone down a chimney and it's that one episode from Breaking Bad with the ATM? Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, it's like a little dirty kid who's like in shackles, yeah. Yeah. but he's been really good. He's got to deli- he deliver. How many present. child slaves has Santa not saved? Probably a million. I think like 60% of the children on earth are slaves. Yeah, and he's, and they're, uh, what, so they're naughty because they're slaves? Yeah, no, yeah. they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. Go they're give them a present. Nice. And while you're there, slip them a key. Yeah. yeah. Give them yeah. a birthday. All I want for Christmas is a skeleton key. Yeah, just get out of that. All right, this next one is just a photo, but it was, I, I picked it because I liked that it was a paid ad Wow. And it's a photo of Santa feeding baby Jesus, breastfeeding, breastfeeding him. him. Yeah. And it says paid ad at the bottom. I wonder who paid for this figurine. Well, I think it's some kind of auto. It must be. Anyway, <laughs> the the coolest thing about Santa and Jesus's relationship is that Santa's prayers are these are directly answered by Jesus. Wow. Santa Claus is one of the few people on earth who can pray to Jesus Christ and actually get a spoken reply. That's unbelievable. Although he keeps the direct prayers to Jesus minimal so as not to annoy him. Plausibly, the Vice Lord Christ gets trillions of prayers from parallel universes and multiverses within the greater omniverse. Most of St. Nicholas's prayers are the equivalent of a rhetorical question, so no direct reply is required. Santa also gets the treat of Jesus being his Santa on Christmas. Whoa. The Holy Christ leaves a gift for Santa underneath his Christmas tree in Claus Manor. Santa's perpetually young kids, Nicholas and Mary, always try to wait up to see Jesus coming down the tree. Unfortunately, they always mysteriously fall asleep. I bet he gives him a rattle. Mm -hmm. I have have, got to be a rattle. Some some I I had a mention of of his perpetually young kids and and mine too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what, what, who are they? What's their story? I Googled them. I Googled like site mystic investigations, Nicholas jr, which is Mm -hmm. the kid's name. And they never explain. They just always, there's just just a bunch of different things where he does. And Santa and his perpetually young kids, (laughs) Nicholas jr (laughs) and Mary. Santa eagerly awaits the return of Jesus Christ at the conclusion of Armageddon. (laughs) Although he makes a point of inviting him to Christmas and Easter dinners every so often, in the hopes of ta- him taking biological form, in his eyes it would be the highest honor and most beloved guest to have, second only to God himself. It is rumored Jesus Christ will appear at Santa's Christmas dinner in a spiritual form not long before the final battle of Armageddon. OMG. That's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Before all shit turns south, 
Santa's gonna Jesus would be like, all right, fine. You know, you've been inviting me for a while. Fucking, I'll, I'll finally show yeah. up in spiritual form, though. In spiritual I'm busy, form. so I'll show up in spiritual form. I'll show form. up. I'll have a. You'll see me at the end of the table in a force ghost, and I'll just yeah. wave. Um, but that's all I have to say about Santa and Jesus. But I did find one more interesting thing that I think we need to learn. We need to learn. Okay. We need to discuss. Um, what is it? Even Santa poops. Not. Unlike the imposter in the video, the real Santa Claus does not poop, nor does he produce <laughs> noxious gases. Oh. As a demi-angel, angel-human hybrid, St. Nicholas does not require food to survive, although his human half does crave it. His <laughs> digestive system is supernatural and 100% perfect. Everything he ingests is utilized by the human half of his body or transferred into angelic energy, the same angelic energy that allows his human components to survive without sustenance. More or less, he could theoretically eat anything without any negative side effects. This is, includes insane things such as a chunk of steel, some <laughs> uranium, or even a cup of hot lava. If you're one of the unfortunate beings on this planet that must endure the indignity of defecation, then you probably need the product in the video above to mask the hell of your smell. LOL, poopery before you go toilet spray is the perfect stocking stucker suffer for humans. <laughs> For most humans, a.k.a. animal god hybrids, on your Christmas list. So why is wow. he as fat as a fucking melon? Because he doesn't poop. He it's doesn't all in there. Poop. Yeah. Every time oh. he eats, uh -huh. his system is But he doesn't need to eat, he says. Right, but he craves it because he's he human craves half craves it, so, it, so he, he does has, it anyway. He has 2,000 years of shit. Yeah, stuck so in so his that's his why his belly much, is big. But okay, this is all kind of becoming crispy clear. And I'm surprised that even makes him jolly. It would make me fucking... If I was that impacted, I'd be mad as fuck. Oh, yeah. I would I would become the anti claws. Yeah. That's uh, that's all my slides. All right, uh, I'll I'll go next here. Uh, mm. I haven't. I this is more. This is a story time. Okay, I have for you guys. Uh, and this is yeah, this is apparently true. The movie Elf with Will Ferrell we were talking about earlier is based on a true story, guys. Oh, mg. So I'm gonna tell you guys about what actually happened. Tell me the true story <laughs> of Elf because it's become so commercialized. Yeah, yeah, it's been basically corrupted, and the st real story is all is. You know, I'm just all I'm going to say, reality is sometimes stranger than fiction. Mm -hmm. That's I've my never, preface to you, this. That's an amazing saying. Thank you. I never heard that. The movie Elf starring Will Ferrell is the story of an orphaned human baby who was raised as one of Santa's elves at the magical North Pole capital of Christmas. An unnamed celebrity in the paranormal community who was a regular guest of North Pole City learned of the true elf story and then gave the idea to elf screenplay writer David Berenbaum. David then built his own Buddy the Human Elf story around the real one because the rights to the original story are held by Santa Claus <laughs> and the human elf. However, Santa does give people permission to create similar stories around the true ones. To some extent, the supernatural secrecy pact could be in play, but realistically, nobody would believe such stories are real anyway. So mm. Santa is the copyright holder of this story, and he said you can't use this story, but you can do one that's almost exactly the so, same. So David Berenbaum has a direct line to Santa. Yeah, yeah he had through, to talk. through an unnamed celebrity who do you okay. think it is that's north pole yeah is it like in the paranormal Burl community Ives? yeah who, it's gotta it's gotta be, <laughs> okay who who is a celebrity that is also involved with paranormal community zach bagans no that's too involved mm -hmm. like and I, I feel like it's gotta be someone who maybe knows will ferrell or rolls yeah. with will ferrell it's probably it's definitely not zach Bagans. Rob schneider could be sasha baron cohen could be could be sasha baron cohen i wouldn't be surprised Me it's neither. definitely not zach bagans zach bagans is like that video of the uh guy standing outside of ice poseidon's bus I don't know that. Don't know it. Oh, okay. Mrs. Claus come, come, come along know. for the Christmas Eve flying sleigh ride. In truth, the real elf was technically Santa and Mrs. Claus' first child, what? although be it an adopted one. On Christmas Eve of 1888, so this is an old story, mm -hmm. Mrs. Holly Claus wanted to come along during Santa's present deliveries that included the usual three sleigh managing elves who assist Santa. There are certain dangers with her coming along as she was merely a human at the time who had to be magically protected against the stresses of flying a light speed teleportation and slay. There are also potential attacks from various dark supernatural beings. Even in her current status as an immortal human, these supernatural stresses would still be an issue. The magical protections required things to be slowed down, which can also make Santa more vulnerable to the anti claws Krampus, or other destroyers of Christmas. Since most of these dark Christmas entities were beaten back sufficiently in 1888, it was somewhat safe for Mrs. Claus so to join Santa. So it happened that year. Yeah. So, okay. Mrs. Claus only came down the chimneys of select places with Santa. That included a religious orphanage in New York City. Sounds familiar, right? I the am movie? starting to remember this. Sounds like where elf. She, she greeted some of the babies in their cribs as Santa delivered gifts. The priest who ran it actually 
actually knew St. Nicholas, so there was no violation of the supernatural secrecy pact. Uh. Mrs. Claus took an automatic liking to one baby in particular, and she rocked him gently in her arms. When it was time to go, she asked Santa if they could take the child back to the North Pole to raise as their own. This was before the angelic heavenly hierarchy intervened to grant them children of their own. Nicholas uh. Jr. Uh. Immortals such as Santa can't have children naturally, despite an angel being able to have one immortal child <laughs> with a human. It's nature's way of preventing the earth from being overrun with immortals, thereby overshadowing the predestined story of humanity. Wow. The priest had no objection to the adoption, but Santa regretfully said he was forbidden from bringing a human to North Pole City who did not find their way there on their own. This was another amendment of the supernatural secrecy pact. She was quite melancholy over leaving the child behind in his crib. Her sobbing in the back of the sleigh made the rest of the delivery schedule a real downer. Santa and the elves tried to console her, but she just couldn't forget the adorable little baby boy. However, she eventually kept a stiff upper lip and fell silent so as not to hinder Christmas in any way. So Santa ruined Mrs. Claus Christmas hard. <laughs> well, where they had to have gotten the kid at some point. But no? then a little fella invades North Pole City. <gasps> Later on, during Christmas morning, Santa was enjoying his first post-delivery meal. So here yeah, we see that he does he eating. does eat yeah. a behemoth of a breakfast fit only for a powerful human angel hybrid like Saint Nicholas. Mrs. Claus barely touched her hotcakes laden in peppermint syrup and <laughs> butter made from reindeer milk. <laughs> Ew. Oh. Actually, that's probably fine. Nearby, a plethora of elves chattered and chowed down with glee. Suddenly, everyone fell silent and stopped inhaling their sugary food as the subtle sounds of a baby cooing could be heard. Santa uttered, What in the seventh heaven is that? Everyone walked over to Santa's giant red velvet sack that should have been empty after being drained of all Christmas toys. The bag was moving, and suddenly a baby came crawling out, smiling at everyone. It was Mrs. Claus's baby boy from the orphanage. The child had somehow miraculously left his crib and entered the bag in the short span of a minute. He managed to stay hidden in the bag throughout the rest of Santa's deliveries due to it being a four-dimensional bag. It had virtually unlimited space within, so the child was probably crawling about what appeared to be warmly lit corridors for hours before finding his way wow. out. Yeah, imagine if it didn't find its he way out. The baby was in the back in rooms. There. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but inside scary of Santa's bag is the back rooms, man. He could have been in there. They could have never found him. Yeah. yeah. He could have died in he there. He could have died been, of starvation yeah. and water lack. Imagine if Canada, Santa killed the baby on yeah, Christmas. I know. Mother Christmas scooped the cute baby up in her warm, loving arms as she cried tears of joy. She looked at Santa and asked, He found his way here on his own. Can we keep him, dear? He grinned widely and told her, Yes, my dear. From that moment onward, she raised him as their own child and named him Sandy in honor of Santa's father, the archangel Sarandiel. Although he spent a great deal of time with Santa's elves, Normally, people age extremely slow at North Pole City, including Mrs. Claus. However, no human baby had ever lived there for any long length of time. Something <laughs> caused him to rapidly age physically to adulthood by the time he was 12 years old in the year 1900. Although he was still mentally a child, <laughs> since his friends were all childlike elves, it was later revealed that his constant inhaling of elf dust acted as a supernatural stimuli to accelerate his Does growth. Does elf dust come off of an elf's so body? So here's a little yeah. sidebar on what is elf dust. Okay. This is I, I pulled up this article just to, to so we know here uh more off most often elf dust is a byproduct of their respiration process when exhaled it's invisible most of the time however it accumulates in the surrounding environment at north pole city much of the glitter in the snow is actually elf dust the majority of elves including santa claus's enchanted elves only breathe the helium in our atmosphere this partly explains their comical oh. low-pitched voices which i think they mean high pitched there. High. Uh -huh. helium composes a mere 0.000524 percent of our air as opposed to the oxygen we breathe which makes up 20.946 percent Elfin cells paranormally process the helium and manufacture an argon neon compound of AR2N3 that is exhaled from their lungs. Scientifically, such a compound could never exist, but this is the world of the supernatural we're talking about here. That being said, the second this rare gas hits the air, it immediately breaks down to argon and neon. These gases, famous for causing the glow of neon lamps, emit a brief glow from the elf's nose and mouth if viewed in complete darkness. In addition, the exhaled elf dust will visibly shimmer in that moment as well. I'm always so fucking amazed at how in-depth all this is. But yeah. beware. No. Oh, my God. That some glittering and glowing substances can, in fact, be radioactive rather than supernatural. Although, in some cases, supernatural substances are radioactive. Thankfully, true elf dust is harmless to humans. Thank so God. if you see something glittering and sparking... Sparkling. It's either. Don't touch it. Because mm -hmm. it could be radioactive. Well, but it could be elf that, dust, could which be elf could make dust. you your body get bigger. That's yeah. true. So could I make you know. age. Kind of a gamble. 
Uh, so back to the story here. Sandy confronted his adoptive father, Santa. He and Mrs. Claus sat down with Sandy to give him the news he was adopted and was originally a human. Despite that Santa made it clear he was their real son brought to them by the spirit of Christmas, he had also grown into a true elf and should no longer consider himself human. Sandy was content for a time until 1909 when Santa and Holy Claus saw the birth of their first biological son, Nicholas Jr., the archangels allowed them to have kids after seeing how positive it was for the clauses to raise Sandy. Sandy became somewhat disenchanted and jealous of the arrival of the new child. He decided to return to the human world in 1911 to find his real parents. As a demi-angel, Santa could look into anyone's mind and see who their parents were. So now we're getting to the movie plot here. Okay. Mm. Sandy's mother, Ellen Hemingsworth, was part of an affluent New York City family who arranged a marriage to, for her to another wealthy clan. Her husband, Percy Hemingsworth, was a horrible cad no. who cheated on her and <gasps> was only in the marriage to increase his family's Aww. power and position in life. Sandy's heartbroken father, Patrick Forrester, <laughs> was disowned <laughs> by his own working class family and run out of town so they wouldn't be blacklisted from working at local factories. He headed out west and became a cowboy <laughs> who never <laughs> married because he was still hopelessly in love with Sandy's mother. Sandy was given a mystical snow globe by Santa that allowed him to open various portals. In a flash, he was out west in a small Colorado town called Woodland Springs, current home of Mystic Investigations, no the creators of this website. He found his father on a cattle ranch. That's almost amazing. Yeah. And now we'll see more similarities with the movie here. Without blood and DNA tests, it took some time to convince Pat Forrester he was his son. Thankfully, his mystical elf powers aided him, and they bonded for some years. Sandy didn't reveal where he had been raised as per the supernatural secrecy pact, along with being told by Santa he would be branded a nut burger without <laughs> proof he wasn't allowed to produce. Mm -hmm. Although in defense of life, one can reveal their paranormal powers. This happened when a violent gang of psychopathic cattle rustlers attacked the ranch in the winter of 1913. Everyone would have surely died if Sandy had not single-handedly repelled them, mostly via dense, high-speed snowball throwing. Happens in the movie. Mm -hmm. Happens in the movie, yeah. Being beamed with a 100-mile-per-hour wet-packed snowball can mess a person up real good. Sandy was also forced to display other elfin abilities, such as super strength, when he tossed a few rustlers around. This caused the formation of glittering elf dust to emanate from him. He finally told his dad he was an elf. Knowing such magic existed inspired him to take his son back east to reclaim his true love. They traveled there instantly via Santa's paranormal portal activated by the magical snow globe. Then, in New York City, Christmas 1913 was approaching. That's Christmas 1913. It's a uh -huh. different holiday. Mm -hmm. As Sandy finally convinced his mother he was her son, she demanded a divorce from Percy Hemingsworth as she fell in love with Pat oh, Forrester all over again. Wow. However... The abusive cat of a husband sent thugs. Not thugs. After father and elfin son. The thugs that were then dispatched Christmas style by Sandy. A divorce was denied by everyone as Sandy's <laughs> mother Ellen was whisked away to England in the dead of night. Father and son managed to find out where she was, but the magical snow globe portal was only programmed to go to Woodland Springs, Colorado, New York City, and back to North Pole City. Sandy was going to return to the North Pole with his father to ask Santa for help, but it was Christmas Eve, and they spotted him in the skies above, bellowing, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Santa sensed Sandy's presence below and landed in some woods nearby. That happens in the movie, too, yep. landing in woods. After hearing what happened, Santa told Sandy and his father to hop in the sainted red sleigh. They immediately flew away to England in a flash. Sandy kicked in the door, and his father got into an epic fist fight with the abusive cad Percy Hemingsworth. I hate this cad. As Sandy, how did, I'm sorry. How did they get to England so quick? It's, it's, a, it's a sleigh, you asshat. No, 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 no. Not. I know how Santa got there. How the hell did Percy Hemingsworth and, and his rich, wife, man? In he's this, a rich, abusive cad. Yeah, but when they have been on, it would have made more sense if he they got were on, on a, a boat. private. Yeah, he got a private boat. All right, all right. He's rich. Uh, his father got in an epic fist fight with the abusive cad Percy Hemingsworth. As Sandy hugged his mother, he said, let him eat floor, dad. I don't, that's weird. After healing the other two guards and putting them into a deep sleep, old St. Nick strolled in with an uneasy smile. He then easily pulled the two brawling men apart with his titanic angel strength. His supernatural voice bellowed loudly, enough of this insane violence. This is Christmas Eve for the love of God. Sandy pleaded with Santa that his parents should be together as the wealthy cad said he had every right to keep his wife and demand everyone leave his property. Now, this is a, an insane power of Santa that I never knew he had okay. here. Listen to this. Santa reluctantly agreed, but then re recited some important words. 
I, St. Nicholas, in my holy capacity of heavenly ambassador, hereby <laughs> make this unholy marriage null and void in the eyes of the holy Lord and savior of the universe. Whoa. Amen. He can dissolve marriages. That would piss me <laughs> off. Yeah, I was, Santa came like, yeah, there's yeah, legal stuff we have to do. Yeah. To and then Santa walks in and is like, you're not married anymore. What man. if you're, yeah, what if that, what if uh, that's what your wife wanted for Christmas and you didn't fucking, that's how you, you, don't you find even get out. alimony yeah. or anything? You're just done. Percy Hemingsworth angrily attempted to punch Santa and the kisser <gasps> as he exclaimed those words meant nothing because he had marriage papers. Santa restrained him and said, all papers and ma- records of this marriage have been supernaturally disintegrated. You are no longer <laughs> married and you will continue to be on my <laughs> naughty list for the rest of your life. No doubt. <laughs> Santa placed the pathetic Percy into a deep sleep as Sandy's parents embraced and kissed. The joyous family used the snow globe to travel to North Pole City with Santa's blessing. That wow. is amazing. And this is something they don't show in the movie. See, Sandy's Consummate parents the marriage. finally get married. Uh, well, because I think his mom's dead. In yeah, the movie. right. So yeah, hard. they didn't want to deal with Percy Hemingsworth. Yeah, in the, in the movie. They didn't want to put a cat on. Yeah, the cat is 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 a scary. But who character. would have been the perfect cat in that movie? John Favreau himself, Favreau. the director. Mm, yeah. Sandy's parents finally get married. Santa finishes Christmas deliveries and had Mrs. Claus make plans with Sandy's biological mom for a wedding. While doing so, the women bonded as Ellen showed great gratitude toward Holly Claus for raising her son. All the elves approached Sandy and welcomed him back with open little arms. They officially (laughs) declared he was a real elf. Sandy also made an effort to bond with his little brother, Nick Jr. At about 7 p.m. on Christmas Day, everyone gathered at St. Nicholas Church. In the witness of several elves, Sandy's parents were married by St. Nicholas himself. Naturally, Sandy was the best man, while Mrs. Claus was the maid of honor. To this very day, Sandy and his parents still reside in North Pole City. Often the Clauses and the Foresters get together for dinner and other activities. Sandy's full name is Sandy Claus Forester Elf, <laughs> but he's still just called Sandy. And last name's Elf? Now, this is the most insane part. Wait, they so ne- this is like a movie. It's like Milk. That's the movie. It's his last name. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, this is the craziest part. This part, they needed to have put this in the movie, and I think that they should release a version with this alternate ending. Okay. Mm-hmm. On Christmas 1914, Santa gave the Forrester family a unique gift. Sandy and his parents opened a gift box and were transported into a mystical realm drenched in the spirit of Christmas. Sandy was made into <laughs> a baby again, and his parents got to raise him until 18 within a dream world. <laughs> they simultaneously believe it was real while knowing it wasn't, a supernatural state that is hard to explain. At the end of what seemed to be 18 years, their bubble reality ended and they exited to find only one month had passed. Sandy and his parents now had the memory of a happy childhood together. Sandy got the gift of two childhoods, both of which he remembers. Did, what the did fuck? he have a say in being turned no, back to a baby? No. Oh my god, this is a fucking Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. And then here's the epilogue, yeah, that's not guys. A gift. They also didn't cover this in the, in the movie. Holy shit. Epilogue. Way more cops. After the orphanage priest died, he spiritually visited St. Nicholas from the great beyond. He confessed to secretly placing the baby Sandy in his toy sack after seeing how much Mrs. Claus loved the child. Santa forgave him and both agreed to never tell a soul for fear of the repercussions of a supernatural secrecy pact violation. Angels, demons, or any other entities who signed off on the SSP could possibly go back in time to prevent the event. Thus, wow. Sandy would never become an elf, nor would his parents ever find happiness. You don't happiness. want that shit. Yeah. Well, that and that's the true amazing story, story of man. Unbe- I, like I said, reality, it's stranger than fiction sometimes. It really mm-hmm. is. They have so many different magical things. He got that turned on into a planet. baby for almost no reason at yeah. the end of it. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Okay. I have, uh, I was looking, so I know it's a Christmas episode and we're supposed mm-hmm. to do all Christmas stuff, but I did get, I just found something that I liked a lot that it was not, it's holiday related, but not so much Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I have to apologize for that. That's okay. Um, but, uh, I do want to really quickly look at the. Have you ever looked at the disclaimer for this website? I don't think so. We might have looked it, it up. The it first has time a. We found di- it. No, I don't think so. I mean, maybe we looked at it for a second, but at first you think that it's just like a normal like copyright policy or something. But it says this: the following text below may be required under the Supernatural Secrecy Pact of 33 A.D. The characters, places, organizations, and events on this site, mysticinvestigations.com, are completely fictitious. Wait, I know what happened in 33 A.D. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Any similarity to any person living or dead is merely coincidental. Any similarity to any place, organization, <coughs> event, or anything else for that matter is also purely coincidental. Uh, despite this site being a total work of fiction, we have no way of knowing for sure if the various supernatural beings and folklore mentioned actually exist on this planet, another planet, or a parallel universe. In fact, they very might well ex- they might very well exist. If you believe the religion of godhoodism, which states that everyone who's good eventually ascends to godhood and creates their own universes, 
which we should do a deep dive on Godhoodism at some point. Yeah. Godhoodism yeah. might be the most important website. part of this entire thing. Yeah. The guy who made Mystic Investigations has his own religion called Godhoodism, uh, which he takes very seriously. He has an entire blog about it. But basically, you become a god at the end of your life. Okay, next slide. Um, who knows if we're required to say all of this under the <laughs> alleged supernatural secrecy <laughs> pact of 33 AD? Blah, blah, blah. The information on this site is not intended to, imp to uh, or implied to be a sub uh, substitute for professional medical advice and then this big medical disclaimer. But uh, you you might see this and say, oh, man, it's all fake. But no. they, they seeded these little things about the, the supernatural secrecy pact of 33 AD. And if you go to the next slide, there's a photo of this thing. Look at that. Oh, oh my God. God. That's the pact. Whoa. It's a golden tablet with a bunch of crazy writing on it. And wow. so this was signed... I'm guessing that these are all signatures of of different of Gods, Santa, yeah. God, angels, all that sort of thing. Uh, and this is a very, very important pact. Okay, I want to move on from this, though. But I just like that they have this disclaimer, but then they tell us the truth in the yeah. disclaimer. Okay, so the story I'm covering is, what are the digital demonic dangers of Cyber Monday? Mm. This is by uh, Xavier Remington. Uh, here you have a photo. If Well, yeah, so you have a photo of some kind of hacker hacking into a MacBook, Something that says sixty percent. And that's in Mordor. It in looks like Mordor, and then there's, there's a bunch of stairs yeah. up to heaven. It looks like heaven and hell almost. All right, next slide. Uh, so maybe you skipped the frightening shopping frenzy of Black Friday to avoid the dangers of being injured by hordes of human shoppers, zombies, vampires, and the demon god of greed, Mammon. A lot of <laughs> a lot of bad things can happen in a chaotic crowd. There's also the potential for demon possession when it comes to those with weak minds. Those suffering from the unfortunate and mental condition of greed and a lust for material items they don't really need. These misguided individuals with monetary malevolence in their hearts are compelled to injure innocent people who get in the way of their supposedly sweet shopping deals. There's a lot of alliteration yeah. on this website. It seems sitting in the safety of your home and shopping the dynamic deals of cyber monday that's an ad, <laughs> built in ad <laughs> on the internet is the way to go sure it's a lot safer but there are still risks as you furiously click away adding items to your virtual shopping carts while whipping out your credit card and there's a photo of a melted computer guys yeah, and, a, and a scary set of yellow beady eyes behind a black oh shadow. shit i didn't even notice the eyes yeah so Jesus this can get scary Christ. i thought that, that was just a, a modem next slide yeah. you may think that cyber monday is safe the risk of cyber monday includes the aforementioned demonic possession for the simple-minded overwhelmed by a lust of luxury items there are indeed cyber demons within cyberspace Fuck. those dark spirits who can't quite make it into our reality completely end up as paranormal binary data forms on the internet this makes sense when you consider that everything in our physical reality is ultimately composed of non-corporeal energy, mm. which is, in essence, a dynamic form of data. Mm. Often, they become trapped in the unfamiliar reality. They are bound by the limits of the World Wide Web, hardware, and various software platforms. However, they can still be diabolically dangerous. Even more alarming is a new form of magic, which dark practitioners of magic or even demons themselves are writing intricate AI code that they can breathe life into. In essence, creating new cyber demonic life, their own private minions ready to dominate and corrupt the future virtual reality holographic internet. Oh my god. So, And this is a Monday problem? This is a big problem on Cyber Monday. Jesus. Next slide. Demons who merely haunt the web while still existing in the metaphysical world will simply use their cyber form to brainwash your mind. Once weakened enough, they will perform a standard direct possession. True cyber demons will sometimes have the assistance of a real-world demon to pass the possession off to. So they will possess somebody through their computer mm -hmm. and then say, Hey, Be Beagle Borg, come get this bitch. Yeah. Scary. The Beetleborgs? Beagle Borg. Be Beelzebub. It's considered a living sacrifice, and the cyber demon is rewarded with power and a promise to be released from the computerized prison someday. If it is merely a lone virtual demon, then on-screen hypnosis and Wi-Fi connections are their entry into your mind, body, and soul. The high-frequency electromagnetic waves of Wi-Fi act as a conduit for higher-dimensional cyber entities to enter your subconscious. Oh, shit. That is where perplexing possession begins. No, not perplexing, perplexing possession. I do possession not fuck with possession perplexing possession. The risk possession. of demonic possession is particularly high while sleeping as your subconscious manages your greedy, material-possessed thoughts of the day. Be sure to sleep far away from the Wi-Fi or turn it off. Listen closely. Ethernet connections are best. We already knew that shit. 
Certainly, <laughs> use of mobile devices is a risk on this malevolent Monday. Oh, just on Cyber just Monday? Just on Cyber Monday. Cyber okay. Monday is probably the highest for demonic second. attack day. Next slide. How oh. to repel cyber demons of darkness. And this is a pair of Jeez. green eyes shoot in a green it's hoodie a shooting out ones and zeros. It's a Jawa. Cyber Monday is the number one day for calamitous cyber entities to rear their blasphemous binary heads forth to plague people with their hellish horror. If you want to avoid the hazards that range from computer issues to being eaten alive, then be <laughs> extra cautious on Cyber Monday. Just think happy thoughts or realize there's plenty of trinkets for everyone on the internet. So don't <laughs> obsess over your trinkets, guys. Yeah. You'll get your shopping around. deal, another ad. But even if you do, even if you don't, it's no big deal. Don't obsess over material items and keep a cool head along with a calm heart. If you see your computer starting to wig out, then immediately shut it down and leave the room <laughs> because it could be a demon entering your domain. Blessing the computer with holy water. <laughs> 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 to put water on your computer or merely cleaning the screen off with it can help. <laughs> Placing religious artifacts around your computer can also help. Using a Bible as a mouse pad <laughs> is a major moral measure of security as you surf That's true. the perilous That's virtual genius. wave. I never considered that. Use the Bible as a mouse, mouse pad. As you, as you surf the perilous virtual waves of Cyber Monday's ocean, swimming thick with sinister shopping sharks, <laughs> if all else fails, try praying to the holy Cyber God. Cyber God? Yeah, Cyber God, man. Amen. Next slide. Cyber Monday at Mystic Investigation. So they're taking <laughs> measures at Mystic Investigation. Great. And there's an ad on either side of this. One's for an LG OLED Evo that says it's time to upgrade your television. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Our employees are given 15 minutes every two hours to personally pursue the internet for Cyber Monday deals. Mm. All our computers are cyber vaccinated with the latest magical anti-demonic software along with being blessed by a priest. <laughs> there are also protection spells in place. Employees may also take turns on cyber patrol duty and shop on websites as they officially look for signs of trouble. Some are also assigned to our cyber phone center on this dangerous day. While waiting for calls, they are allowed to shop as well. Generally, we get information on the type of entity inhabiting one's computer, and then we design an antiviral type program to deal with the supernatural scourge. Tougher cases require us or our partners in other communities to make a house call to exercise the cyber demon. Whoa. So which could be a reboot of The Exorcist. Yep. Yes. Is that your the computer or your the phone computers. is completely has a demon in it, man. Get yeah. that thing out of here. The computer cyst. Interesting computer note. Web. This to me is the most interesting part of this whole thing. Web guys. cyst. Okay. We've the web so cyst. The, the Exorcite. Exorcite. Oh my God, it was right under the Exorcite. The Web Sorcite. Or like the Web Sorcite. <laughs> the Web Sorcite. <laughs> interesting note. Cyber genies are usually Ooh. far oh less nefarious God. and think Akinator. Akinator. Yep. Akinator. Far less nefarious than their real life genie in a bottle counterpart. Their mind is oddly altered in a positive manner by becoming digital. <laughs> Me too, man. Then there's the awesome freedom they feel not being confined to a bottle or lamp, nor are they bound by the three wishes rule. However, it's best to exercise caution if you come across one. They can still get quite vindictive if you offend them. So cyber genies are nothing like real genies at all. Mm -hmm. They no, don't grant wishes. They just they live in the guess. computer. They, they just guess to see what, what... Oh, you're talking about Hasanabi. Right. So that's interesting. Uh, I think maybe there's another slide, but that might be it. Nope. No, that's it. That is it. So that's the... Uh, I know that Cyber Monday is already over. I, I mm -hmm. want to know about Cyber God. I'm really... Into yeah, me too. Yeah, I forgot God? to uh, include something about Cyber God, but maybe we can look at it real quick. Just search Cyber God Mystic Investigations. I'm sure it'll come up. Because I do, I am interested to see. Uh, I want to see a photo. Cyber gods. This has got to be him, right? Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my god! He looks like a Tool music video. Wait, that's crazy. Does the fabled cyber god exist? It is a five minute. Scroll read. down. There are those who claim to have contact with a so called cyber god. However, most of the time they are cyber demons, cyber jinn, cyber genies, mm. cyber ghosts, and other enchanted electronic entities. More or less real life, higher dimension, in dimensional entities or souls that either purposely or accidentally are transmuted into digital data within one computer, a network, or on the greater World Wide Web internet. In the future, complex computer, vices, virus, complex computer viruses may form an artificial intelligence and become cyber demon-like entities. He predicted chat GPT back that, in 2017. Oh, my scary God. scary as fuck, man. And look, a metabolism secret has been revealed. Try this bizarre five-second hack. 
let's just see if there's any more photos of him. False cyber false gods, cyber in, gods the in the future. Just yeah, scroll, just scroll keep through. going. Yeah. Then uh, cyber, cyber god, god afterlife. afterlife. Weird uh, science. Wait. A, G- a genie possessing a computerized Ooh, cy- shit, creation created Lisa the Weird Science Cyber Genie. <laughs> wow. The Cyber God's mission. What does he want? Whoa. He kind of looks like he the... He helps and he's... Oh, he's stopping. He stops the AIs, it says. He fights against the AIs on thank behalf God of... Thank God. Oh. We have, thank Cyber God. That we have is. this Cyber God fighting for us against yeah. the genies. Well, and thank God for the LG OLED Evo. Yep. And well, that's actually this. an amazing deal. That is a great ass deal. That's uh-huh. a great Check deal. Check this out if you have money. And Alexa is built into if that, guys. you're looking for a Christmas present, mm-hmm. that's a gift guide. I All right, you guys. Year. That is the episode. It looks like we might be getting arrested. Yeah, pretty, I think there's pat- a pretty pat- pat- raid. Is pulled up they, they the full office. paddy wagon is in front of the office. They have been here for an hour, so something crazy must have happened while we were recording. So, if you don't building. mind, we're going to go talk to some police officers. Mm. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> guys, I've made a terrible mistake. Uh, what maybe, happened? Maybe a marriage destroying mistake. Oh, no. Yeah, last night. <clears throat> what happened? Me and my wife have decided to start doing a budget, right? To do yeah. take it's that care of our season, money. Man. It's been, that season, man. I've been on the budget too, and it's been ruining my life. It's not good, so. dude. It's not good. <laughs> what it's happened? not good, dude. The lo- moment you realize how much money you actually yeah. have, and your wife makes you've actually double the saving. amount of money, yeah. and it's still not that much exactly money. Exactly the and same <laughs> experience. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then uh, she's like, Is this really how much money you make? And I go, yeah, bitch. Dude, the, we the, have an office. <laughs> <laughs> and Actually, uh, seeing the exact number of money I'm putting into savings every month. Yeah. Just, ooh. Uh, oh, this sorry. This should probably be more than two digits sometimes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so only sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But so I last night we did we went over this budget spent hours doing. Yeah. We set up a joint bank account. It took us weeks. We finally That's got it. We're doing finally too, got it put man. together. Oh had to God. go to had to go to Bank of America. Set up the joint bank account. How to do it took days. I'm gonna need your advice on this because we have no idea how to do it. He said that this is marriage ending. I don't think you need his advice. I know he's getting he's working up to the mistake. I'm making them I made the mistake. Okay. So last night (laughs) So we set up the entire thing, right? And then and and uh, in my checking account, not that much money, but we agreed that like our joint checking account is gonna be groceries and yeah, like for stuff that we'll both do, right? right? So last night uh she goes to bed and I stay up so I can do the dishes like a good guy, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching YouTube videos and I get this ad, man. I get this ad for something called Alpine Butcher that sells oh, A5. No. Oh, wait, no, I know. Because yeah, you were saying you were going to buy it last night after the gym. You, Oh, my God. Did you put it on the fucking joint bank account? I accidentally bought it with the joint bank account. <laughs> Card A5 marbling score 12 Wagyu New York Street Steak. <laughs> it was $130. <laughs> and I was for telling you to go to Costco. Ad, I was telling you go to fucking Costco. Go anywhere. Go anywhere but buying A5 Why, Wagyu the- online. There's butcher shops all over this fucking How neighborhood. How the fuck are you buying something off a of YouTube? <laughs>